shaken and are quaking. Hoo wee. Well, guess what today's teaching is? Flames of fire. <laughs> Hebrew one. Woohoo! Oh. <laughs> Hebrews one. Flames of fire. Like you just heard. <laughs> Welcome to the house of death. In verse 1, let's speak it together. God who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets has in his last days spoken to us by his son whom he has appointed heir of all things through whom also he made the worlds who being the brightness of his glory and express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins, sat at the right hand of the majesty and high, having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. I mean, what a powerful statement. God Almighty who put on flesh came into this world. Not only the express image and likeness, but he is God. Amen? Because God can be God anywhere he wants. That's why he's God. In verse 5, For to which of the angels did he ever say, You are my son? Today I have begotten you. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. But when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all the angels of God worship him. And of all the angels, he says, Who makes his angels spirits and his ministers of what? Flame of fire, are you a minister to the Lord? Are you a servant of the Lord? Then you should be a flame of fire. But to the Son, he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with what? Oil of gladness more than your companions. More than your companions. So oil is what flames the fire. Amen. That's why there should be joy. That's why the joy of the Lord is our strength. Why? Because the oil that is there is flaming the fire. And you're a flaming fire. I have not seen anything exist in fire. It always burns up. Sickness and disease should burn up. We should be such a flame of fire that nothing can touch us. Amen. In verse 10. And you, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain, and they will grow old like a garment, like a cloak. You will fold them up. He's going to what? Fold them up. I'm telling you, we might see the folding. We might not see the folding so much, but we'll see the unfolded in the next. Do you hear what I'm saying? In other words, everything is going to burn up, but it's going to fold up. But when God gets ready to do the next creation or the next move he chooses to do, because this is all a training time, he's raising up a race of his image and likeness. Can you imagine that? And when he gets done raising up this race of his image and likeness, he's folding this whole place up, and he's taking his race with him into another dimension where no man has gone before. And he will unfold his new created desire. God can step to the edge of eternity and release another eternity. Oh, we've got to come out of our peanut brains. Dear God, when the anointing comes, I'm telling you, you can see beyond anything. Nothing. You see beyond nothing. <laughs> Snap. All right. Uh, 
verse 10, 13. Ah, oh, wait a minute. Where am I now? 12, thank you. Like a cloak, you will fold them up and they will be changed, but you are the same and your years will not fail. But to which of the angels has he ever said, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool? Well, who's going to make his enemies his footstool? We are. Are they not all ministering spirits sent from forth to minister for those who will what? Inherit salvation. So angels are sent for me and you to minister to us. What are they doing? They're ministering to us by bringing the message in the presence of God. That's what they do for us. They protect us. The word says that they'll bear us up in their hands lest we dash our foot against the stone. Amen? So know that they are working on our behalf. They're working on our behalf. Why? To fulfill the will of God. To bring eternity into a temporary realm till it's ripped apart, torn apart, and all temporary is torn apart, pushed out, and eternity takes over. Is everybody okay? So we are to be ministers of fire, not smoke. Nothing can touch or live in the fire of God except that which is ordained by God, birthed by God, and called by God. Yeah. As his offspring, fire dwells with fire. <laughs> That's why we have the oil of gladness to fuel the fire, to love righteousness and to hate wickedness. And Revelation 3. In verse 14. Let's speak in into the angel of the church of the Lord the Seans. Write these things, says the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, blind, poor and blind and naked. Now look at What's he saying? You've become proud. Amen? That's, what, that's how proud people think. Verse 18, he says, I counsel you. To buy for me gold refined in the fire. <laughs> gold refined in the fire. In other words, things that are pure. I counsel you to buy for me. Now, how do you purchase anything from God? Prayer, praise, and worship, right? That you may be rich in the white garments, and that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. And anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Whew. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. Is not listen, but hear. Amen. Purchasing, it says, from him. You can't purchase it from nothing else, no one else. You're buying, he says, buy for me that which has been refined with gold. Now let me share with you. What is the color of oil? Gold. Amen. So he's saying, buy the oil. Does everybody get it? Oil is actually gold. Not, not the, this oil. Not the, not the demonic oil. That oil, does everybody understand that the oil from the earth is made from the dead? That's how that oil is produced in the earth. Anything that has died over the years has produced that oil. So that's why it's called black gold. Does everybody get it? Everything to do, everything that's fueled in this earth is by the dead. Think about it. The petroleum, the rubber, and everything that's made 
is made from that which has been killed, dead for ages, that is built up, and its oil has been produced in the earth. That's why it's called black gold. Amen? But we have gold, true gold. It's the oil that's from above that's gold. That's why he says, buy it from me so the fire will burn and not burn out. <laughs> and that the fire of God will burn in you. In other words, this oil produces life. You can't drink the other oil. It'll kill you. Hallelujah. In Matthew 25. Hallelujah. Flames of fire. Have you ever noticed that after you come out of the presence of God, if you're miserable, then you missed it. Totally missed it. You didn't cross over. The oil's on the other side. <laughs> you got coal. You didn't get oil. <laughs> Hallelujah. In verse 1, Matthew 25. Let's speak it. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now, we got to remember, a virgin has been cleansed by the blood. Verse 2. Now, five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no what? Oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet them. Meet him. Then all the virgins arose, trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, Say, Nope, lest there should not be enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to go by, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready, those who were what? Ready, went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came along, saying, Lord, Lord, open up to us. But he answered and said, As surely I say to you, I do not know you. See, fire knows fire, not smoke. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which some, the Son of Man, is coming. The wise were on fire, the foolish were nothing but smoke. There's a lot of smoke these days, and not enough fire. A lot of talk, but no fruit. A lot of smoke, but no fire. Acts 2. And what are they lacking? The oil. Acts 2. In verse 1. Flames of fire. That should be your desire and my desire. We want to be flames of fire. We should come together and, and, as we worship in the presence of God. Wanted to be on fire. We want to leave here armed and dangerous. Holy Ghost arsonists. Amen. We want to maintain that place and that level. When your flame begins to go down, the enemy knows. He knows he can't touch you. He knows that every flying paper airplane with a message will burn before it hits you. He even tries to put his own oil on it, but it burns before he gets to you. Nothing can penetrate through the fire of God except for what has been ordained by God. Amen? We have no excuse. I mean, it is a simple process. Come, die to yourself, dive in, get saturated with the fresh oil and new wine, get on fire, and trust God. Amen? 
glory. Verse 1, let's speak it. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord. Say one accord. In one place. That's how we should be. One accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of what? Fire. And one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Come on. These are called tongues of fire. They were each and, on each and every one that was filled with the oil from God. God empowered them. <laughs> set them on fire with his glory. That he would live in them and through them. Hebrews 12. That's why the baptism of the Holy Spirit is essential. And to be filled with the Spirit is essential. Of course, you'll hear this all the time here. It's not about how much you know, it's about who you know. Amen? Knowledge puffs people up. You know, I know this, this, and this, but do you know him? Well, yeah. yeah. Sure. Then why are you still doing what you're doing? Remember, the fire of God always brings the fear of God. It's the reverence of God. People say, I want to get closer to the Lord. Well, get on fire. You'll get close. <laughs> as close as you can get till you go home. Verse 25. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven. Verse 26. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Now this, once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as the things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may what? Remain. Again, we've talked about the tares and the wheats, the willoughbys and, you know, wannabes. And we're talking now about the fire and the smoke. Amen? There's going to be a separation of those who are full of smoke and not fire. Now, how does smoke come? And when you've ever noticed something that if a fire is burning, you throw water on it, what comes afterwards? Smoke. Lots of smoke. So you know here that the enemy has drenched an individual with some kind of desire that's affecting. It's not flaming the fire. It's putting the fire out. And that's being drenched by something from the enemy. Now you're going to be see a lot of smoke. What is all talk and no fruit? Amen. See, people can say they love God and carry bad fruit. How can you say you love God and get, carry bad fruit? It doesn't mix. Because the word says, if you love me, you'll what? Obey me. It's that simple. But the only reason why it started that way, they've fallen in that condition. Lack of oil, lack of fire. People get offended. Why do people get offended? Because they're not dead yet. They're still fighting for their lives. So many people are still fighting for their lives. Those are people that are full of smoke, not fire. They're all smoked up. They like got Cheech and Chong flick, you know? <laughs> they're stumbled in darkness because they're all smoked up. Hallelujah. Anyways, where are we at? <laughs> did we start yet? Oh, yeah, we did. Okay. <laughs> yes. Verse 28. 
Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a what? Consuming fire. Now, what did we just talk about? Reverence and godly fear in that consuming fire. Our God is a consuming fire. So if you are on fire, it's going to consume anything the enemy tries to bring to you. Amen? It will consume it. It won't penetrate. Glory. Again, God is separating the smoke and fire. Our God, creator, is a consuming fire. He's a consuming fire of evil, wickedness, antichrist, <laughs> every demonic spirit, sicknesses, and diseases. And it's through his people. 1 Peter 1. That's why we are warned about touching something that's unclean while, because we'll put out that fire. We'll begin to diminish that fire. And so he says, come out from among them, be separate. Don't touch anything unclean. And it all starts with a thought. You don't have to go physically touch it, you just have to think it. And it starts. If you allow it to stay there, it's going to penetrate every part of your being and put everything out. That's why you and I must search what our desires are. What is my desire? Is it God's desire? Amen? And what about anything associated with time? Is it God's time? In other words, we don't want to go beyond the boundaries that is going to affect the fire of God in our life. That's why there is a fire of sanctification. It keeps us separated. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 1 verse 3. Let's speak it. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for us who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoiced, oh, now for a little while, if B, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith be much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by what? Fire. May be found to the praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believe in you rejoice with joy inexpressibly and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Tested by fire, through various trials, your genuineness. He was going to say, look it, you're either smoke or you're fire. Amen? You're either smoked or fire, one or the other. Full of smoke or fire? Which one do you want to be? We want to be on fire. You know, it starts by what comes out of your mouth. Because what you speak is what you what? Eat. What you eat is what you become. So you start speaking it. Lord, you're my fulfillment. Fire me up. Fill me with fresh oil, fresh wine. I want to be on fire for you. See, what you speak, that's, that's the whole thing that kindles. It's like a striker. More oil, Lord, more of you, less of me. Come on, do something with this vessel. Send me to a place that I can start on fire. Whatever you want to do with me, just do it. But we've got to come to the end of, listen, the more dead you are, the better. You can't try and stay alive and expect the fire of God to live in you. It ain't going to work. Because your old man's going to spit on that all the time. Try and blow it out all the time. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Acts 17.
you know, one of the things you want to do is, first of all, the Holy Spirit tells us things to come. Amen? So before you even get into something, he's already warning you or telling you, don't get into that conversation. Don't take that phone call. Hello? Don't post Facebook today. Whatever it may be, don't post that. You know what I'm saying? He's always, don't call that person. And then, and then behind it is, you don't trust me? You don't trust that I can do without you asking? You think you got to ask me for everything? See, relationship is different. When there's no relationship, there's always a letter. I need to know. I need to know. Oh, you wimpy thing with no faith. No trust. No fire. Come out of yourself. Take that shovel and the sword and use it. The more dead you are, the more alive he is. Amen? That's why we die daily. But see, these trials are to bring us to a place of death. They're, they're, they're to irritate things that need to get removed. <laughs> Gosh, that just irritates me. What is it? Don't blame the other person. It's you. <laughs> well, that person just irritates me. Why? <laughs> What's in you that's causing that irritation? <laughs> Oh, it isn't me. Oh, you prideful little thing, you. Still fighting for your life. Yes. Listen, you can go to 60 services a day and get no oil. Because pride will reject it all the time. Boy, I'd love to have 60 services a day. There wouldn't be any night. <laughs> We'd stay in the light all the time. Hallelujah. Verse 22. Hallelujah. Acts 17, verse 22. Let's grow for it. Then Paul stood in the midst of Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I perceive in all of these things that you're all very religious. What was he saying? You're very full of smoke. For as I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing him, I'm going to proclaim to you. <laughs> God who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. Nor is he worship with men's hands as though he needed anything since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and boundaries of their dwellings. You know, this is an example why he put Adam in a certain place. He had boundaries for his dwelling. Amen. He was in a place of training. The Holy Spirit always brings boundaries to us. Every one of us has boundaries. And if you're not sensitive to them, you will cross them over. And you'll become diminished in the fire of God. And verse 27. So that they should seek the Lord in hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as also some of your poets have said. For we are his what? Offspring. So you're an offspring of fire. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold and silver or stone, something shaped by art and man's devising. That's how the world looks at it. Truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. Because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained, he has given assurance of this to all by raising Jesus from the dead. 
And of course, when they heard this about the resurrection of the dead, some mocked while others said, well, we'll hear about this stuff later because they couldn't handle it. Again, we are offsprings of fire, not smoke. Then he puts worldly enticing desire to water our fire and become smoke. Only if there's an open door because even the enemy's water <laughs> will evaporate before you. We want to be a perpetual, consistent, continual burning flame of fire. A holy inward flame that the world cannot understand. Amen. Again, the more you are dead to yourself, the more that will burn. In fact, dead wood burns better. Amen. Than fresh wood or live wood. That live wood takes a long time because you've got to kill it first with the heat and then to burn it. Amen. So dead wood burns so much better. And that's why we must be dead to ourselves. Hallelujah. Exodus 3. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Exodus 3 verse 1. Is everybody okay? Let's speak it together. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jericho. A Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Median. And he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mount of God, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. Then he said, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place which you stand is holy ground. You got to remember, Moses was not sanctified. Amen? Anything that was associated with him, that he was connected to in the world, had to be removed. In other words, wherever he walked, wherever he was associated with, that was associated with his shoes. That's why we get new shoes. Amen? We get dancing shoes. Some of us get ballet shoes. We get the new boots. Amen? Of the gospel. Amen? Praise God. And he said, this is holy ground. Again, fire associates with fire. Moses was not on fire. God had to set a standard for him so that he can enter in. Moses entered a whole nother space-time realm. You got to remember, he entered eternity where there was nothing held. There's nothing held there. God holds it all. Moses Spoke with God face to face. And shared with him multiple things. There's so much that shared with him. And then of course Moses had to go back and write it all out. And, and when he was called back up. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. Now. Now the Lord was. Bringing Moses into this place. In verse 5, then he said, do not draw near to this place. Take your sandals off your feet for the place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham and Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face from, because he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. For I now hear their, I now know their sorrows. I'm telling you, this is a representation of now. The same authorities that were ruling then is ruling now. Amen. And Egypt is bondage. I don't know if you know what's going on right now, of course. There's so much stuff going on. They're trying to spend as much money, and they're feeding all of their own agendas. 
Do you know, let me share something with you before we go further. There, is, uh, there are powerful journalists and, and ex-military officers and so forth. Some of these individuals have been following what's been going on for over 30 years. So one of them went and rented a hotel across the White House. And they were like on the top floor. And they went on the roof of the hotel. It was by when Biden was given his inauguration. What was it? Oh, a speech in a Rose Garden. I'm sorry. Nobody was there. No military, no security. A couple of people walking up. I mean, if somebody goes on the roof across from, the ho across from there, you know that there are snipers there. There was no snipers. So he, his wife, I believe it was, was watching the speech on TV. So he had the, his, the TV there in front of him. And, he, and so they were talking back and forth. And he said, is he talking right now? She said, yes. And he said, is there people around him? Yes. And then a fire truck came by, and, and he said, did a fire truck just come where you were at? She said, no. Why? Because the White House, nobody's in. There is nobody in there. He doesn't have that authority, even though he's deceived everyone. Remember, even the word says that the Antichrist will come, not saying that he is the Antichrist, but he's a partner of the Antichrist who will attempt to change laws and seasons. How about change constitutions? They are not in the White House. Does everybody get it? And Trump's still in the presidential plane. In fact, where Trump lives right now, before he was elected, he bought a facility that is established like the White House with tunnels and everything in it so he could command from there. All of, all of this is a setup. Everything is going to turn shortly. I'm going to share with you this, that the Lord keeps pressing on me and pressing on me about the Feast of Trumpets, which is the new year coming. And when he said to me, it's a new year, he didn't mean it's a new year. It's the new year. It's already with me. We are going to be coming to the new year like never before. I don't know exactly what's ahead. I don't know what's what, but I'm telling you. Because dad associates with his feasts because they're his feasts. Not man's feasts. Amen. That's why it's important to know the feasts of the Lord. They're not the feasts of men. So we're going to be seeing some things happening. There's things happening already. We are battling... A deep state of terrorists. They act just like terrorists. The only reason why things haven't happened so quickly is because they're willing to kill you with themselves. And they already did it. In fact, some of them have supposedly surrendered. And 200 military people, our military went in to accept their surrenderance and they blew everybody up, including themselves and the 200 military men. They've had bombs and all kinds of stuff on oil facilities and everything. Our, the righteous are constantly trying to keep up with all of the things that they're doing. That's why they haven't taken over everything because they don't want, they're trying to protect as much loss as possible. But we will reach a point where we got to do what you got to do. Does everybody understand? So I want you to know that this scripture is so vital and important to us because God is sending us out as flames of fire to those who have been taken captive by the deceptions and lies of the Egyptian rule. The Nephilim rule. The Antichrist rule. The fallen angel rule. Because that's what we're battling. Amen? Verse 8. So the Lord says, So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from the land to a good and large land. To a land flowing with milk and honey, to a place of the Canaanites and Hittites and the Amorites and Parasites and the Hezites and Jezebites. Now, these are all giants. 
So in other words, this is still, why is God going to rescue them to bring them to a land where all of these demonic forces are? To destroy them. Everybody got it. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Remember, this all started with fire. Amen? It started with fire. And an invitation to enter and partake of the fire to overcome all evil influence and rescue those that have been taken captive by deception. That's why we're here. That's why we're getting refreshed today. That's why we're in preparation, training, and getting ready for what's getting ready to happen. 1 Corinthians 3. Is everybody okay? Let's speak it. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. According to the grace of God which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and other builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no foundation can anyone lay that than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clearer. For the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by what? Fire. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. So do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Hmm. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone is among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness to God with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. Therefore, let no one boast in men. Let no one boast in men. Let no one boast in men. For all things are yours, whether Paul, Paulus, Crephas, or the world of life, death, and things present, or things to come, all are yours. And you are Christ. And Christ is God's. In other words, you are fire. Amen? So we see that there's a reward by maintaining the fire of sanctification. There's a reward by maintaining the fire of sanctification. 1 Corinthians 1. Verse 18. First Corinthians one eighteen. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the world of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise, where is the scribe, where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God. It pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For Jews request a sign, Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified. To the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God chose the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen and the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. Isn't it a wonderful thing? Thank God he decided to choose us boneheads. 
<laughs> we were pre-qualified. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> verse 30 but of him you are in Christ Jesus who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption that is is written he who glories let him glory in the Lord 2 Peter chapter 1 hallelujah 2 Peter chapter 1 so how did you get qualified to get born again? I became a moron. <laughs> and then repented. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, God. <laughs> yes. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 2. Let's speak it together. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord and his divine power. Now when you hear about divine power, you must look at fire. Amen? Fire. He has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly and great promises, that through these you may be partakers of his divine nature. That's his likeness, isn't it? Amen. His integrity. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For these things are yours and abound. If, you, if these things are yours and abound, you will never be what? Barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Divine power and divine nature. All in the fire of God. Amen. And I'm going to close at 1 John chapter 4. Flames of fire. You know, I was listening to something on a news somewhere. I forgot what it was. And somebody had set themselves on fire to uh, get a message across. I thought, what an idiot. That's all they needed was the fire of God. But do you know what they used? Demonic oil. Demonic oil. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Why? Because they burned themselves with gasoline. Where did it originally come from? The dead. Oh, hallelujah. See how much things are ruled from the dead? Things that are run here on this earth all associated with the dead? Because the dead dude runs it. His name is Satan. He's a dead dude. And he will fry. First John chapter 4, verse 1. Hallelujah. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. In other words, those that are smoke or those that are fire. But this you know, the spirit of God, everyone that confesses, every spirit that confesses that Jesus has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus um, Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Why? Because you and I carry the fire of God. It's not about how you feel. It's whether you believe or not. They are of the world, therefore they speak of the world, and the world hears them. 
We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know that the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another for love is God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God for God is love. In this the love of God was manifested toward us that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. In this love, and this is love, not that the, we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his fire, his spirit. Amen. We are to be flames of fire. I want to encourage everyone. That's what you look for. You want that new oil. What does it say? When that new wine comes, there's a new flame. Amen. Flames of fire. The world doesn't understand that. <laughs> you know, they, they don't like to gather together and worship the, the Lord and press in. They have too many other agendas. But we want to be a flame of fire so that we can burn anything that's not of God out. God deals with us with this, his flame. He begins to purify us. He begins to sanctify us. He starts checking our thoughts, everything. And anything that's hindering and troubling you, you're to turn over to it so it can burn. Amen? Don't play with it. Release it. Accept, believe, and trust God. Amen? What a time and season we are at. What a call we have. There's such an, an urgency. Such an urgency. So be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, we thank you for your word. We ask that you seal your word and keep us thirsty, hungry for your fire, for your presence, for your glory, that we may be an extension of who you are and a light to this world. Prepare our hearts for communion. And you may bring all tithes and offerings up in Jesus' name.